sin against you. I have stored up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. With my lips, I declare all the rules of your mouth. In the way of your testimonies, I delight as much as, as in all riches. So in verse 14, like we want to get there, right? We want to be able to go into prayer and to talk to our children and our husbands and our coworkers and walking down the street and say, gosh, I just love Jesus so much. And his testimonies are so much delight to me. It's more important than riches. I will meditate on your precepts and fix my eyes on your ways. Fix my eyes on your ways. Pay attention to that part too. Fix my eyes on your ways. It's an action we are having to choose to fix. Remember, it's not a natural inclination. We're having to choose to fix our eyes on him. It will not be easy. It will not be natural. Eventually, it becomes that way because we make it a habit, just like brushing our teeth. We, it becomes a habit. So our goal is to train ourselves until it becomes easy or easier. It's never easy to run an Ironman. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it's never really easy to run three miles um, for me. That's for me. Um, I will delight in your statutes. I will not forget your word. Oh, I forgot. Verse 15. I will meditate on your precepts and fix my eyes on your ways. No, I didn't forget it. I will delight in your statutes. I will not forget your word. I will delight in your statutes. I will not forget your word. And I, I kind of, I didn't do this in the last class, but I want to jump back up here to um, verse three. Oh, it's sorry, bless two. Blessed are those who keep his testimonies, who seek him with their whole heart, who also do no wrong, but walk in his ways. You have commanded your precepts to be kept diligently. You have commanded your precepts to be kept diligently. So he's not recommending, he's not suggesting that keeping God's word and storing his word in your heart is a suggestion. Oh, this is a good suggestion. Maybe you should try this. It might be good for you. No, he's like, I'm commanding you because I love you so much. I'm showing you the will. I'm showing you the way. I'm I'm helping you learn and how to yearn. Like, he knows you more than you know yourself. He loves you more than you love yourself. He loves your kids. He loves your spouse. He loves your neighbor more than you love them. So we have to get to such a point that we trust that whatever he says and whatever he's telling us is good and right for us. Because if we don't believe that, then we're not going to have a desire to choose him over our opinion, over what we think is right or what our feelings are telling us. And so studying the word is a huge way to grow in the Lord. It's a huge way to have his desire to abide in him. Because I don't know if you all remember me talking about my grandma and the MRI and how, like, I just wanted um, to be with my grandma, you know, in heaven. I can't wait to see her again. And it's because I know her and I spend a lot of time with her. I know her character. And we want to get in such a way with Jesus that we want to go to heaven to be with Jesus, Right. Because we've spent so much time with Jesus, we know him. And so it's been really convicting because I feel like I know my grandma more than I know Jesus. Because I've spent so much time with her, more than I've spent in the word. And so instead of letting that condemn me or pull me away from scripture, it has really encouraged me to pull forward to scripture, pull forward and strive towards the right thing to do. So I want to spend so much time in the word, knowing Jesus, that I can eventually say, oh, I can't wait to go to heaven so I can see Jesus. So I can be with the Lord. Um, so that's a, another important way of why we want to spend time in the word. So the strategy that has come up with me, I want to preface. This is what's worked for me. This is just, this is, you have to take your personality. You have to remember the question I asked yesterday. What stirs your affection for Jesus? And add all of that into the equation. Your children, what, you know, each season will look different as far as what strategy um, you're going for. If someone, my brother's training for an Ironman and I'm training for a 5K, our training is going to look a lot different. And he's going to be swimming and I'm not. You know, so he's going to be doing things I'm not, but the finish line's still the same. Does that make sense? So we're still in the race. The finish line's still the same, but the training is different. And so remember that. Don't compare yourself to your neighbor or your husband or your friend or your pastor's wife. Compare yourself to Christ. So when you're going into the scriptures, when you're going into study, do not compare yourself to who you used to be or who you 
are striving to be, compare yourself to Christ. Because that is who God wants us to compare ourselves to. Have a strategy for how you plan on reading. So for me, is um, I like to set up, my, set up my station. And so I have this like little seat in my couch that I sit at. And I like to, you know, have my Bible open and ready, my pencil, my journal, what I'm going to read, and have it ready. So when I wake up in the morning and have my quiet time, it's ready. I'm not, like, wandering around, like, what am I going to study, and what am I going to do? You know, I, it's, it's right here. It's all laid out. So I open up my Bible. I leave Bibles open in different areas around my house, too, because it helps me remember Here's scripture. Let's read it. It's open. It's already ready for me. I try to make it as easy as possible for me to get up out of bed and spend the first few minutes in the morning because morning time is my jam. So if night time is your jam, set up your station wherever you are in your bed and your wherever your little reading room is, wherever you want to go. Just pick a pick a reasonable place and say, this is my station. This is my time with the word and treat your appointment with Jesus as an appointment with Jesus. Treat it like the most important part of your day. And one another way that I do that is I know that if I'm with someone who's really important to me and I haven't seen them in a long time or maybe I just um, or with the president or whoever you think is important in your mind, whatever celebrity mine would be Carrie Underwood, just saying, I would not have my phone out. Like, could you imagine me sitting here with Carrie Underwood and like having my phone out, like texting other people like halfway into the conversation? No, I don't, I don't even care where my phone is. And so with quiet time, I am so tempted by my phone and by being busy, I literally hide my phone. I like put it away. I put it, like the other day I gave it to my husband. I was like, here, take my phone. It's quiet time. Because he knows that I can't be around my phone because I'm so tempted to look up something, whether even even good things, even good things. Um, But it's such a temptation. And so I have other friends who do the same thing, that they actually put their phone on do not disturb. Mine is um, just completely hidden. So I put that away, and um, I have a notebook out, like that journal I was telling you all about downstairs. And when I'm studying the Word, it is so good to write what you're studying about, right? Just like as you're studying in college or whatever it is that you're learning about, you're trying to be ready for your job. So I like to take the Scriptures and write down exactly what um, I see God saying to me. So how can a young man keep his way pure? By guarding it according to your word. With my whole heart I seek you. Let me not wander from your commandments. So I write these script, I write this out. I take, you know, very small verses and I say, okay, with my whole heart I seek you. What does seek mean? I seek you. What does practically seeking God mean? Like, are you like getting your, you know, binoculars out and seeking him? No, like you're seeking God. You're in his word. You're studying so I use this app, and I'm going to have a lot of these resources on my Instagram or Facebook so that you guys can, um, like, and then Jen, maybe Jen can email for those who don't do social media, um, so that you guys can see these resources, because there's so many good resources out there to help us abide and study God's Word. So I want to make sure that you all have those in your hands. It's very important to have these resources to help you abide. Um, and so one thing that I do like to have is the Blue Letter Bible app. And it's the BLB app. It's the Blue Letter Bible app. And I like to study the word and have a concordance. So you can actually buy the concordance book, Strong's Concordance, or you can um, use the app for free. And I like to write the word seek. So what things do I like to seek? What things um, do I think seek means? How can I seek the Lord more? So I don't just sit and read when I'm studying God's word. I like to um, study by writing out what does seek mean? What does wander mean? How do I wander from his commandments? What causes me to wander? What does that word wander mean? So there's biblical usage in the BLB app. So you can actually click on concordance and it comes up a biblical usage. So it tells you what abide. So I looked up abide and uh, some of the biblical usage behind this is depend. Okay, so that helps me a little bit more know how to depend on God. I want to depend on God. Um, So that is another way that I get um, my study on. That's how I go deeper in my study. But um, accountability is so, so important. So I get my station ready, right? I get my coffee brewed. You know, I have it on delay brewed. Or if you have a carrot, 
pop it real quick, go ahead and have the water in it, just like you would to get ready for church in the morning. When you lay out your kids' clothes, you lay out your kid, your clothes before school, you know, you do that at night. So I try to get all of this ready and prepared. I got my pumpkin creamer, I got my coffee, you know, and if I'm a little slacking in my Bible study time, you know what I told you yesterday, I go buy that fancy coffee, I go buy that fancy creamer. So I have, do whatever you have to do to know that this is important. This is important time with Jesus, and you want to treat it like that. And so accountability has been game changer for me. Game changer. I'm going to put a lot of Bible studies on my Instagram that can kind of help you um, gauge, try to figure out what Bible study is best for you. But I like to be in a Bible study because it keeps me accountable with other women, and um, it's something I know that I can do is first thing when I wake up in the morning because sometimes I just don't know where to go at in the word. I, and, and when I don't know where to go, I always go to Psalms, and that's just me. My husband does not really enjoy the book of Psalms as much as I do. He's more of like Leviticus, like history nerd, you know what I mean? Like he is the nerd. And so he's like, yeah, in my history seminary class, I learned da 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 And I'm like, I have no idea what you just said. And I'm like, yeah, well, in Psalms, it's like, oh, Lord, I love you. And da 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 how wonderful your way hilarious how our personalities are so different which is why it's so important to ask yourself what stirs your affection for Jesus because what it is for me is going to be different for you and if you don't know where to start ask your preacher ask a, a godly woman in your life that you look up to say hey what Bible study do you think I should be in and do you want to be in one with me find a mentor find someone that you look up to to help you be in a Bible study Grab your daughter, grab your mom, grab um, a friend and say, hey, I, I don't know how to lead a Bible study, but I want to facilitate. Can you meet me at 7 a.m. or 6 a.m. at um, a coffee store and let's do this together or let's do it over the phone? Um, I've done Bible studies before where we just did it alone and texted each other a thumbs up every time we finished it. Just to have any kind of accountability. And that has been a game changer for me is to have a Bible study. So the first thing I wake up in the morning is I know these girlfriends are going to keep me accountable. They're going to be like, did you do your Bible study? What did you learn? And we're learning from one another. So as soon as I wake up in the morning, I know I'm going to do this Bible study. I'm going to answer these questions. So that is really important. Um, and to use the means God gives you, and that is your pastor, and those are your friends. Um, God has equipped you for where you are. Um, another resource I'm going to throw out there is these 10-minute K. Arthur Bible studies. Super short, super quick for busy people because we're all busy, busy, busy. Um, so have a plan and fight for that plan. Have a strategy for how you plan on reading. I recommend the ESV Study Bible. It has um, commentary in it, and it is very. A study Bible is so helpful for me because how many times are we reading God's Word and we're like, huh, what? What does He mean? You know, is that literally or not literally? You know, is this? Does He does He want me to like? How does He want me to interpret this text? And so. Um, the commentary has been very helpful. Just be careful that you don't only read the commentary, that you read God's word more importantly than commentary. But commentary has been a huge game changer in studying the Bible. Um, so I spend most of my sitting and busy time always doing something to help me memorize scripture. And so those scripture cards that I have down there, I put in all of my busy areas. So in front of where I do the dishes, I have scripture cards, um, or I listen to a podcast or the audio Bible. So the 